might not look like it, but there's some blatant advertising going on here. The natural world's a marketplace, and what's on sale is the wildest sex in the world. Hardened campaigners use every trick in the book to get what they want. And when they succeed, the result has a dramatic climax. Some take a more obvious approach to satisfying their animal passions. They go head to head and fight for them. But battles for sex can be bloody and brutal. So some go on a charm offensive. And a closer look reveals nature is full of seducers. Their aim is always the same. They're in the procreation race and fertilization is the prize. But rather than attack each other, they use sexual signals which attack the senses. In nature, just like our own world, looking good, smelling sweet, and finding the right thing to say, all promote the quest for sex. So these charmers do whatever it takes to win the mating game. The hard sell takes a look at the currency of sex in the wild, how it's marketed, bartered, and sometimes even bought. troop of chimpanzees lounge in the jungle. Things may look peaceful, even playful, but that's all about to change. It's not just the tension which is rising. Each troop is dominated by a fiercely territorial and highly sexed male. He rules with an iron rod, and the sight of this can drive him crazy. When females come into season, there's no hiding it. Sex can be brutal. The leader takes who he wants, when he wants, and how he wants. <laughs> Lower ranking males cower. They'd risk a beating if they stepped out of line and tried to mate. <laughs> But when it comes to sex, they're about to be given food for thought. It was believed chimpanzees were strictly vegetarian, but the truth is sometimes they choose meat from the menu. Which is bad news for some of their neighbors. <laughs> Males dominate the hunts. Females usually wait for their share of the spoils. The leader doles out chunks of colobus monkey. It's one way he keeps order. Some meals come free, but some don't. Sometimes payment is required. The currency's food the exchange rate is sex. The fact's not gone unnoticed by lower ranking members of the troop, like this chancer. Perhaps this is one reason hunts are more likely when females are in season. 
the small monkeys scatter, but they are no match for this clan of testosterone-fueled hunters. It's not bloodlust spurring this schemer on, it's just lust. He's finally about to up his ante. The hunt over, Top Chimp retires to the trees to take his fill of meat and mistress. Unaware that close by, a shady transaction's about to take place. A chunk of meat exchanged for sex on the sly. This furtive monkey business is the ultimate in primate prostitution. Fast food for even faster sex. Eight quick thrusts, and the deal's done. Other animals come bearing gifts, but not all these gifts are as generous as they appear. A swarm of Mormon crickets gather in the Utah desert for their annual sexual jamboree. This male's stumpy wings are useless for flying, but they help him advertise for a mate. There are thousands of potential partners, but he's not choosing lightly. He's looking for the fattest female he can find. Bigger females are likely to be carrying more eggs, and he's got a once-in-a-lifetime gift for his lucky mate. Weighing up the competition, he picks up a potential date, but she's a little on the skinny side, so he puts her down again. Another song attracts a meteor Mormon. Now she really gets his juices flowing. They have sex. And here comes his gift. It's a sticky mess. It's a package called a spermatophore. Part of it's inside her and contains good old-fashioned sperm. Part of it's outside. She thinks it's a delicious protein-packed meal. But she's being duped. It's packed with amino acids that fool her into thinking it's nutritious. In truth, it's mostly water, but very gummy and locks up her jaws. This strange gift is to buy him time. The longer she chews, the more chance his sperm has to fertilize her eggs. With so many males around, this gives his genes the best chance. But he might not come again. The spermatophore weighed over a quarter of his body weight. He's invested so much energy producing it, it may be a one-off. It's a rare example of males giving everything for the future of their unborn. After she's laid her eggs in the ground, she can mate again. He can't. Having spent his load, he'll while away his remaining days munching sagebrush. It's waste, not want, that's used to advertise sex on the savannah. The Addo Elephant National Park in South Africa seems like a place of outstanding natural beauty. Until you take a closer look. A single elephant can dump more than 150 kilograms of excrement every day. and many others contribute to this carpet of filth. But fortunately, help is at hand. 
meet the park's cleaning department. An army of Sicilian dung beetles, stirred into action by a fresh fall of feces. To these bugs, there's great wealth in waste. A female sculpts a ball. It's a steaming signpost advertising her fertility. This is where she plans to lay her eggs. To a male beetle, the sweet smell of dung is the ultimate turn-on. But this isn't the suitor she had in mind. Perhaps it's his face which doesn't fit. Scientists are considering if female dung beetles might be seeking a symmetrical date. Unsymmetrical beetles could be unhealthy and poor fatherhood material. Either way, this lopsided Lothario gets the brush off. This handsome hard shell seems to be just what she's looking for. Essentially symmetrical. They've got each other, got a huge pool of excrement. Now they need to find somewhere to have sex. Females seem to be in the driving seat and doing all the hard work. Maybe that's just as well. Her date's about to need his strength. They've got a lopsided stalker. He's back. Unsymmetrical he might be. Undeterred he isn't. And he's still horny. His plan to rush in and mount the female has been rumbled. He won't be bugging them again. The courting couple re-establish their bond, gently touching mouth parts. It's a chemical connection. Then they keep on rolling. Eventually, beetles and ball come to a halt. They've reached a mating mound. First, the ball's buried to keep it safe. Then they get down to the mucky business. Sex can last for hours. And hours. After the ball is over, the male heads back to the heap. With fresh supplies dropping in, the dung pile dates are mounting up. The female lays a lone egg in the ball. And for her grub, it really is a crap start in life. Food, gifts and signposts all sell sex. But they only work when potential partners are up close and very personal. <laughs> Selling sex over a longer distance requires a completely different approach. When the target audience is spread out, sexual signals need to go further, much further. This calls for broadcast advertising. Like these strange underwater rumbles. Alligators are the world's noisiest crocodilians. Their jaws and lungs might be huge, 
but they've still got their limits. Above water, their loudest roars can only be heard up to 150 meters away, which could be a problem for sex-starved males, as they sometimes live well over two kilometers from females. But fortunately, they've got another way of advertising themselves, and it's subtler than you might think. Rumbles. This sound is sometimes mistaken for thunder, but it's caused by a lusty alligator bellowing underwater. These roars cause vibrations, which can be picked up a long way away. In a murky Florida swamp, tangled with roots, they're an effective way for a male alligator to get his message through. Sound travels much further and almost five times faster in water than air. And these low frequency rumbles are a powerful aphrodisiac. Once a male's lured a mate, he maintains the tender approach. But will it work up close? He shows his good intentions by exposing his vulnerable side, the soft flesh of his neck, which could be risky. Fortunately, this female's willing and does likewise. This time, they won't be going for each other's throats. Alligators don't just need a good set of lungs to sell sex, they need them to have sex. They're both going down. Although alligators can't breathe underwater, that's where they mate. Females wrestle with potential lovers, rejecting any who aren't strong enough to romp in the swamp. This muscle man makes the grade, and sex leaves them breathless. Breathlessness isn't a problem for this beauty. What male hammerhead bats lack in looks, they make up for in lung power. They prove sound can sell sex just as successfully above water. They've been described as a music box on wings, but it's music to a bat's ears only. Males advertise themselves with ear-blistering honks and their whole bodies are designed to amplify their calls. Their heart and lungs have been forced into their abdomen by a huge voice box which fills their entire chest and their heads are elongated to help them boost sound. When they want sex, they make deafening monotonous music which can go on night after night. After sundown, the jungle erupts. There's a deafening cacophony as nocturnal nightlife wakes up, and these bats drive the beat. Loud oral adverts for sex can have other drawbacks, like attracting the wrong crowd. Autumn in the Scottish Highlands is a noisy time. It's the rut, the red deer mating season, and in this world, it's the males that give deep throat. Stags stretch their voice boxes right down towards their breastbone, allowing them to release incredibly deep roars. Each roar is a series of sounds repeated from just one breath. During the rut, males can roar twice a minute, all day and all night. That's nearly 3,000 roars every 24 hours. The effects of this heavy breathing can be incredibly arousing. The roars actually advance ovulation in females. 
but they also send out another message. A lone stag patrols the mountains, roaring at his harem. But others have heard him. Lone and lusty, these bachelors are about to launch a very vocal leadership challenge. The first rival's smaller and easily frightened away by the force of the harem holder's roars. But the second challenger is bigger, bolder, and with a baritone to match. The two stags hurl insults at each other for 20 minutes. But it doesn't settle matters, so they let their antlers do the talking. It's a matter of brute strength. Just who's the pushiest? The leader keeps control, for now. That means he'll be mating continually with up to 20 hinds throughout the season. That's six long weeks of sex, shouting, and seeing off rivals. With this amount of pressure on his lungs, legs and loins, the battle to stay in charge is incredibly tough. Rutting stags eat little, and can easily lose a third of their body weight in a month. It's hard to win this campaign, and once won, even harder to stay on top. For some, the scent of sex is far more important than the sound like the residents of this Madagascan rainforest. It's an early April morning and a group of ring-tailed lemurs are relaxing. But there's something in the air. The females have come into season, but only for a day. Their clitorises have doubled in size. They want sex. The news is rubbing off. The air's heavy with musty messages, and they're driving the males crazy. For lemurs, sex sells through sex smells. This Romeo is desperate for sex, but he's not alone. And he'll need a good wrist action to prove his prowess. Wiping the scent from his wrist glands onto his tail, he's ready to take on his rivals. This is chemical warfare at its worst. A battle of body odor. Tails flick as males catapult invisible stink bombs. The weapons are pheromones, chemical signals indicating strength and dominance. The foul fights can last up to an hour. The most pungent is the winner. And it's Romeo. He's absolutely rancid. Now he wafts essence of sex. A pheromone to help the female assess just how fit he is. It's intoxicating, and it works. But privacy is hard to come by. Mating couples are often interrupted by others desperate to get in on the action. Sex is a stop-start affair as the males seize off the competition. Not that it seems to affect his rhythm too badly. After he ejaculates, he leaves a sperm plug inside her vagina. It's meant to block the sperm of any successive lovers. 
but it's a faulty failsafe. The female wants more sex. This male's more than willing, and he's a. Like all male lemurs, he has a barbed penis to remove other males' sperm plugs. But although he's got the content, he's not got the style. She rejects him. She wants quality as well as quantity. If females are unstimulated, they're less likely to conceive. With this many males sniffing around, they don't need to waste time with substandard sex. Scent can also sell sex underwater. In Lake Erie, some vampires are idly siphoning trout blood. They're lamprey, eel-like fish, and they're parasites. Round, jawless mouths, razor-sharp teeth, and a rasp-like tongue make light work of fish scales. But fortunately for the trout, these sucking little things are about to take a long-distance call. About 80 kilometers upstream, buried beneath the riverbed, a young lamprey larvae. Before they surface and migrate to the lakes, they send out a message to their elders. They release a migratory pheromone, a signal to the older fish that they need to start thinking about sex. They're guiding them back to the spawning sites. The adults heed the advice. Now they've a long, slow journey ahead of them. They can only travel 11 kilometers a day at most. The males are first to arrive, but they've no time to rest. The strong current could easily sweep eggs away, so before sex, they need to build walled nests by hauling rocks. And some are as big as baseballs. Now it's the male's turn to place their own advert. They flood the water with sex pheromones to attract females. It's bile acid made in the liver and pumped from their gills. They emit vast quantities to make sure they reach their audience. It takes longer for pheromones to travel in water than in air, but these bitter messages still get through. Females can pick them up from over three kilometers away. Once their dates arrive, the really hard work starts for the males. Over a week swimming upstream and the hard labor of building nests, the next challenge is a sexual marathon. The water clouds in an orgy of egg laying and ejaculation. The lamprey's free flowing pheromonal signals worked, but the sexual effort involved kills them all. The next generation is assured. This generation is destroyed. Soon the only smell riding these rapids is the stench of dead fish. In the world of the hard cell, other senses have a critical and more aesthetic part to play than bile broadcasts. In crowded quarters, visual signals are vital. Standing out from the masses is a must, particularly if you're looking for sex at first sight. A young male waved albatross is getting close to home the island of Espanola in the Galapagos. He spent most of the last six years soaring over the Pacific. Now he's hungry for sex. His loins are calling him home. And he's not the only seabird seeking sex. Fresh from a fishing trip, a male blue-footed booby's now got his eye on a different catch. 
but there are thousands of birds crammed onto the island. The noise is deafening and the smell cloying. Seabirds can't rely on sound or scent to attract a mate. For them, style counts. They'll have to stand out from the crowd. These males will only come dancing. The albatross is the first to hit the dance floor. The long wings which make him such a graceful flyer seriously hamper his arrival. Like all albatross, he crash lands. The booby, meanwhile, has a more controlled descent. Circling the masses, he flashes his prize assets. It's not what's between his legs, it's what's at the end of them. The bluer his feet, the healthier he's likely to be. Males, like all male seabirds, neither has a penis. Sperms transferred by a cloacal kiss, so called because mating birds have to line up sexual openings called cloacas before the male ejaculates. And as both semen and feces pass through the same passage, it's important for males to go before they come. But as the sun sets on the dance floor, one of these dances has a twist. It was thought that albatross couples were together for life. However, recent research shows that some succumb to the charms of more than just one male. One female was recorded mating 85 times with 49 different partners in seven weeks. Which is no joke. Off the coast of Jamaica, another show is in full flow. Only this one has an added attraction. Lights. Squid skin is translucent but they can add and remove color quickly and dramatically. Pigment cells called chromatophores are attached to muscles in their skin. They can be stretched and retracted with dramatic results. These are Caribbean reef squid and their skin flicks can be a turn-on. This male's trying to sell himself with style, donning a pinstripe suit. A female answers back with a line running provocatively down her back. This turns him pale and turns him on. He flashes frantically, desperately displaying his urge to have sex. But courting squid can flash at each other over 300 times without getting anywhere. She jets away, tempting him to give chase. It might be her way of testing his strength, seeing whether he's fit enough to father her offspring. Finally, she flashes a pinstripe herself, it's her sign, she's his. Sex itself is also over in a flash, and it could easily be a messy affair. He attaches a sperm packet to her skin, directly under her eye. She'll keep his seed in storage until she finds somewhere safe to lay and fertilize her eggs. This flicking light show's done its job. The squid genes will go on. Not all animals rely on quite such flashy adverts. On a Texas mud flat, this male's trying to attract some female company. And he's not alone. The shore is packed with hundreds of tiny males, all using the same campaign to try and grab a crab. The females are feeding nearby, taking advantage of low tide to sift the mud for food.
Females have two small front pincers, but for their mates, size is everything. Every male has one huge claw which weighs almost half their total body weight. Like a small businessman in a large sports car, they hope it will be impressive enough to lure females into having sex with them. During the mating seasons, male fiddlers aim to dig burrows, then shout about them, crap style. They wave their huge claw back and forth, desperately trying to entice a female into their burrow. A male catches a female's eye stalk. As further encouragement, he drums the ground. And his efforts pay off. As the couple head underground for a quick fiddle, he plugs the door shut. Males who aren't so lucky can take their sexual frustrations out on each other. The two grapple, but this fight's all about posture, not power. Something else is about to end their squabble. The huge claw might impress the females, but it's of little use for feeding, fighting, or self-defense. Sometimes it takes more than just a large appendage to make an impression. Here in Australia, a female's looking for some color in her life, and she's about to get it. This male satin bowerbird is the architect of his own sexual destiny. He's building a bachelor pad. First, he needs to find the right pitch. Then he makes two parallel walls of twigs. It's called a bower. However, it'll take more than this to lure company his way. He needs the right decor and anything blue will do. In this world, it's not red lights which advertise sex. Female bowerbirds find the blues irresistible. So this playboy prepares his vice den with anything blue he can find. His efforts haven't gone unnoticed, but he can't just rely on his erection to get sex. Females may visit many pads, but they'll only mate with one bachelor. The so he redecorates his bower with more blue flowers, ready to impress his next date. Down in the Californian kelp forest, a male Garibaldi fish is doing the cleaning. If he's going to attract a mate, he needs to keep his house in order. Any untidy clutter is sucked up and spat out. Female Garibaldis like males to keep their thatch trimmed. When a potential date comes nearby, he darts frantically around his nest and makes loud clicking noises to add to the drama. This aggressive display is meant to show off his home and prove just how well he'd defend eggs. That he could be one bad dad. But this female passes on his invitation. Perhaps she wants proof, not posturing. Returning to his topiary, he's about to get the chance to do just that. The intruder could be hungry, hunting, or just passing through. Whatever it's doing, it may be about to enhance this Garibaldi's chance of having sex. The smart money would be on the octopus, but that's without banking on a challenger who's desperate to sow his seed. 
the winners in the orange corner, and his hard man heroics haven't gone unnoticed. She's back, and he's sold himself. If he wanted eggs, he's got them, up to 80,000 in one fell swoop, dumped all over his nest. And his instinct to protect and serve kicks in before he's even ejaculated. First to be sent packing is the mother herself. Now it's just him and his eggs. Our house proud hero finally climaxes all over his own carpet. That really takes the biscuit. Not all hard sell hard men look the part. Some look deceptively angelic. Late summer in Minnesota, North America, and cocoons crack open as young butterflies emerge. The temperature's falling, so these newborns have a long maiden flight ahead of them. Thousands migrate south to spend winter in a warmer climate. They cluster in the tree of Mexican forests for about eight months until things have warmed up at home and they can head back. But when they take to the air again, the mood changes. They've become sexually mature over the winter months and their sex life is far from delicate. Other members of this butterfly family, the milkweeds, gently sell themselves to females with wafts of pheromonal perfume stored in pockets in their wings. Not monarchs. They've given up on pheromones. Their strategy seems to be a more violent one. Having pounced, the male grasps her with the claws on his feet. Try as she might, on this occasion, she can't escape. Weak, dizzy and defenceless, she folds her wings. It's now easy for him to drag her up into the trees and have sex. For up to 16 hours. Once sex starts, the female can't stop it. But sometimes, she can stop fertilization. Like Mormon crickets, male monarchs give spermatophores. However, females don't always buy the whole package. She'll eat the food, but she might not use his sperm to fertilize her eggs. As they fly away to look for more sex, many of these males haven't sired young. All they've done is supply food. So the female monarchs can frustrate one of the hardest cells of all. In the wild, there are many ways of selling sex. Gifts, sound, and smell. Light shows, dances, bachelor pads, even payment. All these advertisements have the same purpose, to attract a mate, to have sex, and to pass on genes. The success of these campaigns ensures the future of the next generation, and yet more wild sex.